McLaren in 1999 because of a construction work error, you had an accident which resulted in a near-death experience. How did this happen and what did you experience? We had moved into a new house in 1999, which was actually a model home. And because of a technical error during the assembly of the banister, which was electrified, I was electrified when I touched the banister. My body almost began to boil internally and I was pulled upwards. First I saw myself hanging from the ceiling, whereupon I was pulled further upwards. I don't know up to which height, because I only felt the suction. I didn't see anything remarkable. The only thing was that everything was just so bright. Did you hear or see anything during this phase? Well, whether I saw something, it was just bright. A bright light was there. And I heard voices telling me that I had to go back and that my task in life had not yet been accomplished, that it was too soon for me to be here. Did you recognize the voice? Yes, from the voice, it was my grandmother who told me this. And how did you come back? It was like flipping a switch or like slamming a car door. That means I was back right away, right in the moment when I was disconnected from this power. What effect did this near-death experience have on you? This near-death experience made me realize that there is more than what I experience in everyday life and what I can touch and that there has to be something more, whatever that may be. I had a dog of the Hovavart breed at that time and this she dog was at the breeders when she was one and a half years old and there she was kicked. That means that she has had verifiable whiplash trauma in her spine. I thought for a long time about how to help her and I noticed that each time when she lay down on my feet, I had a kind of twinge, as if someone was pricking my thigh with lots of needles. This was very painful, but I couldn't get my feet out from under her body. And when she got up, she used to run around again like a puppy, able to do all the movements again that she couldn't do before. And this made me look further. So first I started to think, What's up with me that this is possible? And so I took a T-touch course, which means that the dog is being treated with some kind of circular movements. And that's when I realized that I couldn't proceed with T-touch because my hands are doing something else. That is, I found out that my hands are capable of pulling pain. Well, I can pull pain out of the body with my hands, no matter whether it's a human or an animal body or the body of a dog. And I also tried it out with humans after I tried it out with my dog because she always remained still and so nicely patient. What was then a trial, so to speak. After that, I achieved the master's degree in Reiki in order to find out how to hold my hands so that the whole thing can be done more easily. By my ability to pull out pain, I was also able to help a lot of people, for example, when they were suffering from back problems. So that someone who could hardly stand up because of severe back pain could then get up normally in the morning again because they had got rid of their pain. And if this person continued to be careful with themselves afterwards, then the pain didn't come back. So this near-death experience caused you to discover your healing powers. Yes, that's how it is. On the one hand, I was able to discover my healing hands in doing so. And on the other hand, I discovered that there is more to what we see and what we perceive in everyday life. In 2005, you had another experience. Can you tell us about this? Yes, by doing energetic work also with people, well, by treating people and also animals, it somehow came about that some spirit beings became interested in me. And those beings were interested in my energy and wanted me to work for them, but not in the form of helping, but in order to do harm to others. But that was absolutely out of the question for me because I wanted to help and I don't want to harm anyone. Can this be understood in the sense that during this experience, you heard the voices 
and saw those beings? Yes, due to this incident, it was clear to me that I was allowed to see and also to hear the purely ethereal. Can you describe one of these dark figures in some way? I just remember them to be very dark, wearing dark clothing, their faces very shadowy. They had some kind of hoods on their head. And how did you manage to get out of this threat? I actually sang during the nights so that I could rest within myself. I could not sing out loud because my husband was sleeping next to me. But because I was singing, the line was busy, so to speak, and the villains could no longer get through to me at all, so that they couldn't even try to influence me. For example, they had made promises to me that if I came over to their side, I would get rich. And when I replied, no thanks, I don't need it, they simply tried to convince me by means of their threats. But I didn't deal with them at all because it was very clear to me that I wanted to use my healing hands in a positive way, that is, for the benefit of people and not to harm anyone. And because I remained persistent, they gradually distanced themselves, realizing they didn't have a chance and that I could not be persuaded. Thus, I never answered in fear, but simply through singing, I moved into a higher spiritual vibration level as if it went by itself and I didn't respond to any heartache or the pulse I had either. But I just tried to stay calm knowing that no matter what happens I was protected and sheltered. Was this an attack by some spirits from the lower spheres? Can it be put that way? Yes, you could say that. What subsequently happened after this experience? I could see more and more spirit beings at first, only dimly. They first were sort of transparent, until gradually they became clearer and clearer. And today, I can see them so clearly that I really can't differentiate if someone is in a physical body or if the person walking next to me is a purely ethereal body. There were also very funny encounters when it seemed to outsiders that I was talking to myself because over time I simply realized that someone was standing next to me and was talking to me, asking questions, which I then answered, upon which I asked questions myself too, and then in turn also was answered by this companion. But people then looked at me quite strangely, and then I realized, okay, something is going wrong here. And then I started to always ask my respective companion, if I were to touch you now, will I feel any resistance or won't I feel any? Whereupon I received the answer, no, you won't meet any resistance. When did you first notice this, apart from this particular experience? I was driving the car and suddenly there was someone sitting next to me. And although my passenger seat was empty from the material point of view, I saw that someone was sitting there suddenly talking to me who was then completely amazed that I understood him, even though I was driving the car and was supposed to be concentrating fully on driving. I simply was completely relaxed, so I was allowed to see and hear him. And what did he say? Oh, he criticized my driving style. Are there any other experiences that you remember well from these encounters with these spirit beings? Yes, for example, when I treat an animal, I once treated a horse that had back pain, and then a spirit being explained to me the cause of the back pain, and so I was able to tell the owner. And she then ensured that the person who normally rode this horse no longer rode him, because that person sat completely incorrectly. He had a completely incorrect spinal posture, and thus this bad position had been transferred to the horse, and I was only able to explain it so well because I had heard it before. Then you have been using this talent for your energetic work ever since. That's right, yes, because when I get such information, I just pass it on unfiltered, without thinking about whether it can be possible or not. I just pass this information on one to one, because my counterpart then knows best what to do with it. So we can say that in your daily life, 
you see or hear spirit beings again and again. Well, for example, when I'm working in my garden, my godfather is around me. He was a landscape gardener. And then he criticizes me when I cut the plants incorrectly, giving me hints that I should perhaps cut them a little higher or a little lower. Or I also get his advice when the leaves of a tree are affected by some kind of rash. Then he tells me how I can remedy the problem so that I always receive valuable support from him. This then would also mean that these spirit beings are also interested in people's everyday lives. Yes, when I engrave and drill holes, for example, my late husband is around me, trying to make it clear to me how to operate the machine so that I can drill the holes more easily with advanced calculation. It's only because I usually turn the drill to the wrong side, then all the calculation is of no use. You engrave, so your husband engraved signs? He engraved signs, and now I continue this activity. Does he appear regularly? Can you then talk to him? I can talk to him normally. It's as if there is a conversation going on in my head, but I can also hear the voice. But this chat isn't audible, so an outsider can't hear it. Sometimes it's funny when I'm sitting in a group and some spirit being makes a funny remark, because then I have to be careful not to suddenly start laughing out loud because the others wouldn't understand because they cannot hear it. You say you also can see these spirit beings. Where do you see these beings? Would it be possible for you to give some examples? For example, when I am cutting plants, my godfather is standing right next to me, trying to control my hand by saying, so to speak, lower, lower, or higher, higher. And by saying this, he tries to control my hand so that I then prune the plant in exactly the right place. Or when my husband is there and I'm drilling holes, he usually is only there when I'm about to drill holes because it annoys him that I can't calculate it before because I myself instead prefer improvising. Then if he is there, usually standing to my left. Can you describe the clothing of these beings or what they look like. They usually wear the clothes I was used to seeing them in, and many spirit beings appear to me only as points of light. Your husband has been dead for a long time. Did he ever tell you how he is doing in the world beyond? What he is doing there? He told me that he was reflecting on his life, and when going through a life review, he realized what he thinks he has not done right, and this without judgment. So if he had the feeling that he could have done something better, he brought calm to it in a way that it's also emanating from over there into our world. And he is now in further training over there because even in his lifetime, he was a very strong healer. But he never used his hands because he didn't have the courage. This actually only indicates a certain degree of insecurity, and it hindered him from using his gift on others, so that he was never able to demonstrate his ability to the outside world. He now is in the process of practicing it so that he gets more confidence in order to be able to really practice this in his next earthly life. You say he's undergoing some training. Yes, he is doing an apprenticeship in the spiritual world where he is just simply taught how to hold his hands, how to focus, what must be given attention to, simply the whole process, how it works best, and how to achieve most. Did your husband also tell you what the environment in the world beyond is like, how he is living there? He has always told me that life over there can be compared to life on Earth. It's just beautiful. Do you perceive some other spirit beings around you? I feel and hear my spirit guides and depending on what work I'm doing, there are different ones to appear. They are not always the same. For example, when I do energetic spinal treatment, there are others that are coming to instruct me or to give me advice on how to do some things better. They also actively intervene, thereby dissolving blockages in the spine and filling in light and love. And in this sense, I am nothing but the physical body making available my hands so that the spirits can work through me. Do you know what these spirit guides look like? 
Can you describe them? Different ones appear each time, and they look different. Those who are with me for the spinal treatments, these are two of the spirit beings. One of them has blonde, wavy hair and is usually wearing a kind of blue coat. The other one also wears some kind of coat, but rather in a shade of green, a kind of cloak. And if they look at you, then you just feel the unconditional love emanating from them. Are they male or female? The spirit being with the blue coat is a male being, and the one with the green cloak is a female being. You say that there is an unconditional love emanating from these beings. How do you experience this? For example, when I'm in a bit of a bad mood and they appear and look at me, my whole body fills with such positive energy and love that you no longer can be in an appallingly bad mood. Then you just laugh and feel happy. Everything then becomes much more simple and easier. And the problems that you previously thought you had as problems simply fizzle out and you suddenly see only the solutions. Karen, is there any experience that you had with people you knew then experiencing them after they had died? Yes, there is such an experience. I had it when my father's sister died, and we then participated in the funeral ceremony for her. And while we were still sitting in the church, it became very interesting because I saw her sitting next to me, and the priest was telling us about her life. And he said how good she was, and that she had always helped people. And she was actually sitting next to me, constantly commenting on his remarks, saying, well, that's what I had to be. That's what was expected of me. And then he said, she was so gentle and took care of everyone. Every traveler who came got something to eat from her. And then she said again, sitting next to me, well, that's what I had to do. That's what I was expected to do. And that was all so, well, everything the priest said, she then put right, just as she had experienced it at the time. And that was very funny for me. I had to control myself so as not to laugh out loud because of her comments, because she really said it in a very amusing way. Although actually, it all was rather a sad circumstance, but she was completely relaxed about it. And for her, what the priest said was so stupid that she felt the need to comment on everything he said and had to put it right. Have you ever known a person who contacted you who had not previously believed? Yes, that was my mother. One day, I happened to catch her when she was about to have a heart attack. So she called me and I felt that she was facing a heart attack, whereupon I then called my brother and asked him to contact the emergency services and do everything necessary so that she could be helped and did not have a heart attack. We obviously caught her just in time so that she received medical attention before the heart attack was triggered. And then later on, when she had passed away, she came to me explaining that she had never believed what I was saying or what I was perceiving, thereby letting me know that she now knows that's actually the way it is and that she was mistaken. And the fact that I actually saw these things and also reacted correctly was a nice confirmation for me, knowing that what I am feeling is right and that I also have been acting correctly in the right way, going straight into action towards the solution. If there are people who don't believe you that you can see or hear spirit beings, what then do you tell those people? I try to explain to these people in simple terms that all these things exist and that they can open themselves to it and that they, that is everyone, is being accompanied by spirit beings every day, whether people can see them or not, whether they can hear them or not. Everybody is accompanied, and many times it can happen that people are going along on their path when suddenly something else intervenes at some precise moment so that they don't continue to pursue their path, be it that the phone rings or something else quite trivial happens, and I have found that you are again and again nudged in the right direction towards your purpose in life, chosen by yourself. All things giving us joy, everything we enjoy, where we can laugh, where we are in the lightness. That's exactly the right path for us to pursue. 
because in those moments we are on the right path to reach our goal in life. What impact did all these experiences have on your life, on your worldview? The biggest impact on my life, I think, might be that no matter whatever will be, no matter what obstacle I will be facing, I first will look into it, and then I no longer deal with it, because I know that there is a solution for that. I no longer get stuck in problems, but I directly approach a solution. If something happens somewhere, or if there is any bad news, it just simply passes me by. It can no longer block me. It no longer has any influence on my thinking either. It doesn't hamper my life, nor does it scare me, because I know that I am protected. I know I am sheltered, and that no matter what is going on outside, I can move around among terminally ill people suffering from contagious diseases, and I don't have the slightest fear. I think you can even say that I am resting within myself, and that makes my life a very joyful haven. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you for inviting me.